Welcome over to this presentation, Visions of Glory Timeline Part 1. This presentation will be based on the book that was published in 2012 called Visions of Glory. Um, I'd also like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers and all the folks that comment in the comment section on the channel. They've been a great support over the years. And also, I'd like to say a big shout out to the Judgment Day Refreshment Committee, which is Jody, uh, Justin, Kirsten, Heather, and my dear wife, Nicole. Just want to say a big hi and a big thank you for your support. And also a big shout out to Brother Guerrero and Brother Preacher Palmer, who have their own YouTube channels for also uh, helping to grow my channel as well. So um, a little bit of a disclaimer here. Um, I'm an active member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I am not a prophet or an apostle of the church. I sustain my leaders as having authority to govern the Lord's Church in these latter days. This presentation contains my own thoughts and opinions and does not represent official doctrine of the church. So Elder Bednar, one of our apostles, stated that the COVID-19 crisis demonstrates the fragility of religious freedoms and the need to shore it up. In our understandable desire to combat COVID-19, we too, as a society, may have forgotten something about who we are and what is most precious. He concluded, now is the time for us to heed the wake-up call, to remember and to act. So this presentation series is based upon my studies of a book called Visions of Glory, also known as Vogue. Um, this book is written by one of the members of our church. He is a faithful member of the church and um, I speak to him from time to time on Facebook. I don't know him personally, but um, he's been very kind in that he has been willing to answer my questions. Um, when, I've, when I've reached out to him. Um, but many of us watchmen in the Latter-day Saint community uh, read this book, uh, we read it often, and it was written in 2012, uh, or published, should I say, uh, and it was about a near-death experience of a, a, a man called Spencer. That is not his real name. I won't disclose his real name in this presentation because uh, that wouldn't be fair. <clears throat> but uh, this book uh, appears to be um, actually um, being fulfilled uh, as we speak. And this book um, is based upon a man's near-death experience. Uh, he actually almost died on a few occasions and was um, shown by the Lord in vision what would become uh, of the world in the latter days. He, sh he revealed um, in this book a lot of uh, plague, plagues and um, earthquakes and worldwide uh, catastrophes that would take place, particularly uh, in America, where that's where most of his vision uh, was shown. Um, but I'm gonna go into this uh, in more detail in the next slides. So this is an excerpt from his book. So any white boxes that you see during this presentation will be actually um, extracts from the book itself uh, that I've obtained on Kindle. Uh, so uh, he describes the plague to be like this. When a person contracted the plague, he got many smallpox marks on his skin, similar to pimples, these grew in size and quantity until nearly his whole body was covered by them. The person grew very uh, sick quickly. The itching and pain was severe. Shortly before death, the pox erupted and oozed. This fluid was extremely contagious. Anyone who touched it got sick. The picture above is uh, supposed to be a child with a monkey box. Um, and we know at the moment the World Health Organization is currently about to conclude a meeting as of this week, whether they are going to declare smallpox to be a global pandemic. In the United Kingdom on the 8th of June, uh, our government passed a law 
to recognise uh, monkeypox as a contagious disease. Um, so he didn't actually uh, name monkeypox in the book. He just said it had smallpox mark, uh, uh, pimples that were similar uh, looking to smallpox that grew in size and were very contagious. So I've been studying the scriptures, uh, particularly Isaiah, quite a lot over the past couple of years. Um, and I've stumbled across scriptures that resemble the book Visions of Glory. Um, so let's read this in Isaiah chapter 1. It says, Ah, sinful nation, which refers to Ephraimites, which are uh, Westerners in the end times. Uh, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. So just want to stop there on verse 5 first of all. So I'm a nurse. I'm a current, a current practicing nurse in A&E. Um, <coughs> I've actually seen um, a lot of patients come in from taking the C19 snake bite jab and they have uh, presented with a uh, um, pericarditis and myocarditis which is inflammation of the heart and they've also been coming in uh, more and more with uh, mini strokes uh, and full-on strokes so as it, as, it, as it says in verse 5 the whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint so that is one thing that uh, I found interesting when reading the scripture, but the next verse in verse 6, I believe, refers to uh, visions of glory, uh, what if, uh, Spencer saw in vision regarding smallpox or monkeypox. So it, it says, The sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. So, in Visions of Glory, um, it states that uh, prior to the earthquake uh, in the fall time or the summer time, um, as stated in the book, um, this uh, plague had killed 25% of the world's population. So, currently, the world's population is almost 8 billion people, um, and 25% is 2 billion. So, I'm just going to read what it says. It says, about this time, a devastating plague swept across the nation. It came in three waves. Each wave was more virulent, which means um, extremely severe, killing healthier people and killing them quicker. It swept across North and South America and around the world, killing billions. But the troops had arri who, who arrived seemed to be mostly immune to it, though a few of them died as well. Of the total population before the earthquake, it es I estimated that 25% died in the plague. I knew as I was flying over it, which, which he, he flew over uh, America in his vision, um, that the plague had been man-made. And we know that with C-19, there's evidence that it is man-made. So this one likewise will be man-made and plus also um, there is lots of whistleblowers that have come out since the 1970s who have said that uh, viruses have been weaponized uh, for decades now um, in secret uh, military studies. Um, so it says um, I knew I was flying over it, that the plague had been man-made and the troops had been inoculated against it. Inoculated meaning vaccinated. But it took many months before the survivors of the plague realised the true source of it. I will talk more about this plague in the next chapter. The lawlessness began to ease as the marauders, um, which more or less means roaming people, were caught and uh, summarily executed by the troops. 
and he makes reference to the troops wearing blue green hats uh, 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 helmets in in, um, in his vision which is similar to the United Nations who uh, he stated that invaded America in his vision at this time they did not have any regard to civil rights or even human rights they had a job to do and they did it with brute force and a little empathy which is normally a uh, martial law <clears throat> uh, this this only occurs on the martial law when when the military take over society so my previous presentation in 2021 called the abyss i uh, stated that the visions of glory earthquake would take place in 2023 as you can see there is a big blue arrow uh, pointing to uh, the visions of glory earthquake um so based on some new information that's come in regarding uh, the monkeypox uh, outbreak and some of the new world order um protocols and uh, uh, tabletop exercises that took place um one in particular i'm going to show in this presentation in the following slides they made reference to uh, the pandemic uh, this new next pandemic uh, being a problem in the year 2023 this um information only came my way two weeks ago in like the month of uh june 2022 so as you can see i made this presentation in 2021 so once again it's um i'm not blowing my uh, own trumpet no pun intended there um but it's just nice to know that from time to time i can get something right because i've took a lot of risks and many things have not happened that i've said might happen at certain times but i'm not a prophet i'm not an apostle i just study and you know like to um make these predictions based on mathematics basically um it's just all based on time so yeah um i mean i could be wrong the earthquake could be 2022 as a lot of people are stating now online i think it will be but uh, the abomination of desolation i believe will be 2023 that's when things will the, all convergence points will meet at this period of time and all hell will break loose so what i said previously in 2020 about world war three and um, this seems to be coming to fruition also um, i did mention this in my last presentation which was called was dan wilkinson right um, and the reason why i made that is because i've been wrong and i've had a lot of abuse over it so i just thought i'd make a bit of a comeback with a uh, um, you know these presentations feeling quite good about myself and um, but either way i can't really um give glory to myself the glory must be given to the lord jesus christ because if anything has come from from me that has helped uh our community of watchers and if any truth has come through me it's only been through uh, the spirit of prophecy the holy ghost which we're all entitled to as individual members but i'm not a prophet for the church i'm not to lead the church this is not my role my role is is just to uh, be a watchman really for the people who can who can hear me and um, that understand uh, these things anyway and that are have an interest in them so uh, yeah so uh, president smith's uh, prediction of world war three is second-hand anecdotal uh, information it was written in the journal by someone that knew him um, a long time ago and uh, they kept the record of what would happen between russia and germany and right now we can see a bit of a conflict between russia and germany with sanctions and also um ukraine are involved in this in america um, and the uk um but nuclear war uh, will break out uh, as it says in visions of glory um <clears throat> but the cities seem to be the highest risk areas to be in I live in a city myself i don't really want to but i am a father and i have responsibilities here so um i don't want to abandon my family uh, but that's the that's the um the catch 22 that we're all in we have reasons to leave and reasons to stay but we must uh, follow the lord uh, ultimately at the end of the day evidence to back up my theories so obviously um i do make a lot of claims uh, of late 
it to be right. So uh, what evidence have I got to back this up? Well, um, one particular uh, piece of evidence is the Nuclear Threat Initiative document. Okay, so this is um, the document that supports uh, my timeline theory and also Vision to Glory as well. This document was produced in March 2021, but only came to my attention in June 2022 and most people's attention as well, particularly in the Watchmen uh, community and amongst conspiracy theorists as well. So um, let me just read what this document states. It states that in, in May 2022, there would be a bioterrorist monkeypox attack. Um, that would be on the 15th of May. And then I, on June the 5th, 2022, there would be a monkeypox outbreak in Brinia, which was a hypothetical a fictional a country uh, that was part of this scenario practice um, that took place. So a little bit of background about what these uh, scenario kind of uh, exercises are all about. These are basically supposed to be uh, think tanks that get together uh, and come up with all these um, predictions about future events that might take place at certain times. And if they do, how to act in accordance, uh, you know, to give advice to, uh, to governments on how to act appropriately. Um, but uh, obviously, um, we know that um, Bill Gates, uh, in event 201, uh, that was um, in 2019, that predicted the uh, C-19 outbreak. So let's just continue reading. So in, in June uh, 2022, there would be approximately 1,421 cases and four deaths. Right now, as we speak, we are um, we are near that number um, worldwide, and uh, Brinia, um, I believe, is just a representation um, of uh, Great Britain, uh, and also says that some of the key issues would be an international alert and warning system, and the benefits of a need to uh, assess the risks early. Then also in January 2023, it says that the uh, the monkeypox outbreak has now progressed in to 1,000, uh, sorry, 1.3 million deaths worldwide, and has affected international uh, food and um, other supply chains. Um, in May 2023, there will be 27 million deaths. And the uh, the terror group that released the uh, biological weapon would be revealed, and it would happen via the infiltration of a bio lab. That's all in the document. And then by 2023, we would have 20, uh, 271 million deaths, and then it would require some international financing to prepare against future pandemics. Mm -hmm. So um, this kind of meets the criteria of the Visions of Glory uh, book in terms of um, the, um, the high number of cases in 2023 in December. It says that would, there would be 3.2 billion cases worldwide. And we know from Visions of Glory that there was actually 2 billion deaths that occurred. So I did state that uh, the earthquake would take place in the fall of 2023 but obviously um the, this um tabletop exercise uh, states that there would be 3.2 billion cases by that point now it only states that there will be uh, 271 million deaths but um i believe there'll be much more than that when it actually gets to the time so I thought this would be an interesting thing to share from documents that are found through further research. Click the link below if you want to um, look at the document yourself. Uh, please stick with this presentation because there is going to be some amazing timelines coming up in the uh, upcoming slides about when the earthquakes would take place. 
Um, so I'll just read what it says. Although national and global leaders are appropriately focused on the immediate demands of the C-19 response, the international community cannot postpone implementing the steps necessary to protect against future biological threats. This must include the recognition that while naturally emerging pandemics continue to pose a significant threat, the next global catastrophe could be caused by the deliberate misuse of the tools of modern biology or by a laboratory accident. That's already happened anyway with C19. What's going to happen with this as well? It's all planned, it's all staged, but we know uh, from Visions of Glory that it was uh, man made. Global leaders must build stronger public health and medical response capabilities that can scale to address very high consequence biological events, potentially orders of magnitude more severe than what we are experiencing during the past two years. So I'm not going to read all this slide, but this is from the document. Um, it says that in January 2023, there would be 1.3 million fatalities, but I would rather uh, change that to uh, 1.3 billion fatalities, making its way to the 2 billion that, um, that um, was uh, stated in Visions of Glory. And it also states that no uh, effective therapies will uh, be uh, useful, such as uh, snake bite jabs. Um, also, as well, that um, they would have to turn to um, non pharmaceutical interventions, such as preventing people from getting together and making people stand apart and uh, covering people's faces. So. That's already happened with C19, but this is going to happen again. Um, but it's going to be through martial law. It's going to be done by troops next time. Um, there's going to be so much chaos by this point. So uh, in Visions of Glory, uh, this excerpt uh, reads, About this time, the same plague that had devastated much of the East Coast arrived in Utah as it spread across the nation. The foreign troops had brought hazmat equipment as if they were expecting the plague and a few of them got sick. As I said, we found out later that the plague was man-made and the troops had been inoculated against the pathogen that caused the plague. So, um, I wrote here that the troops first arrive in the fall during the first quake and one year later, post the third earthquake. Troops came with hazmat suits in preparation and anticipation of the arrival of a man-made virus in the United States that had already uh, spread across the world. So, in the... Uh, nuclear initiative tabletop exercise it uses uh, the fictional country Brynia as where the outbreak would take place now that sounds like Britain to me so when you look at what Wikipedia has said about where this all this drama all broke out in 2022 it says that an ongoing outbreak of monkeypox was confirmed in May 2022, beginning with a cluster of cases found in the United Kingdom. The first recognised case was confirmed on May 22, which is bang on time with the tabletop exercise. In an individual with travel links to Nigeria, where the disease is endemic. I don't believe that person even existed. But it has been suggested that cases were already spreading in Europe in the previous months. From 18th May onwards, cases were reported from an increasing number of countries and regions, predominantly in Europe, but also in North and South America, Asia, Africa and Australia. 1,433 cases have been confirmed as of the 9th of June, which is so close to the number of 1,421. So it's just incredible, really, to see how accurate this prediction has been, because all of it is uh, fabricated. Um, so, yeah, it's just part of their, their plan, basically. So I've put the Nuclear Threat Initiative on a timeline just so you can see it um, from left to right in a horizontal kind of fashion, because I know I'm a visual learner and it, it does help if you can see things visually. So in May 2022, there was a monkeypox attack. In June 2022, there was the outbreak in Britannia, which is United Kingdom, really. 
uh, by January of next year, uh, 2023, there should be 1.3 million deaths, but I believe it could be more like 1.3 billion deaths. Um, in May 2023, there is uh, 23 million deaths. Uh, sorry, 27 million deaths. Uh, and the revelation of uh, the terror group uh, origins is made known to the public. And they'll probably come up with some story that it came from Russia, but really it was probably United States uh, or United Kingdom. It was the Western uh, New World Order uh, government controlled factions. Um, and then in December 2023, it says that there would be. 3.2 billion cases, but I would definitely say at this point we're at 2 billion deaths. So a lot of people in our community are in a hurry to say that the quakes would happen in 2022, but we have a lot of things to happen first. So before the quakes, we have this to happen. And this is what he described before the quakes. He, he, he witnessed this in his vision. In, re in reference to the plague, it swept across North and South America and around the world, killing billions, but the troops who had arrived seemed to be mostly immune to it, though a few of them died as well. Of the total population before the quake, I estimated that 25% died in the plague. I knew as I was flying over it that the plague had been man-made and the troops had been inoculated against it. But it took many months before the survivors of the plague realised the true source of it. So um, before I go into the earthquake timelines, I'm going to just do a little bit of a cr chronology uh, summary here. So in his vision when he was flying over America, um, he saw financial collapse, power outages and issues with water supplies uh, and bartering between people at the time of the first earthquake. So that had already taken place before the first earthquake uh, really happened. So he said the first earthquake destroyed most of Utah in late summer or fall time and he did actually state it was either the fall or uh, the late summer time. Uh, the second earthquake was in the springtime. Um, this earthquake destroyed most of the coasts of North and South America. Inland USA was spared, set, but this earthquake sent tidal waves worldwide causing a worldwide catastrophe. Parts of California were broken away into the sea. The third earthquake was two months after that, so this would probably get into summertime now. Um, third earthquake was um, two months later, and it divided the USA into an east and west. Uh, Spencer then flew up in vision again at this time, um, seeing California broken away uh, into the sea and the Great Salt Lake uh, with new water and Chicago was destroyed by tidal wave due to new landmass uh, that arose in the Gulf of Mexico. So this is basically the Visions of Glory uh, timeline, what you're seeing right now. So the, um, my hypothesis is that the uh, first earthquake will take place are in the fall of uh, 2023 and that'll happen in Utah and some acts um, nu of nuclear war would have already taken place in America before this happens. This I believe is the abomination of desolation um, kicking in because there's 1,290 days uh, that has to pass before this happens and on the next slide I am going to show one of my previous presentations where I um, said that uh, the United Nations would invade uh, the Americas in 2023. So uh, in the springtime of 2024, we should see the next uh, earthquake, which I call the springtime earthquake that uh, Spencer seen in vision, and that ruins most of the American coastline. But um, we also get uh, two months later. Uh, Another earthquake, which uh, a new landmass uh, forms in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, comes out of the sea. And uh, John Taylor's dream 
um, also ties into this time period because uh, there'd already been biological attacks that had decimated most of the east coast of America um, at this time. So um, the the presence of the United Nations troops seems to be um, round about the uh, fall time, the winter time of um, 2023. And also it continues all the way into 2024. And this is the invasion of Jerusalem, or should I say, the invasion of the New Jerusalem. And a lot of us believe that the 2024 eclipse that takes place indicates a gathering to the New Jerusalem. So Satan will want to have his, uh, his armies trying to invade um, the New Jerusalem when people gather there. So, um, I'm going to be uh, showing on uh, next on the next couple of slides um, my uh, abomination of desolation slide, and uh, also an alternative uh, theory that a lot of people believe at this moment in time that there's going to be um, the earthquake will take place in 2022. But I think that's a bit premature to think that that would be the case. Although I am open to these things, but I do think a lot of things have to happen beforehand. So previously in 2020, I made a presentation. It was one of my first ever presentations, the second coming of Jesus Christ timeline. And I put a theory across that the abomination of desolations set up would begin in March 2020, based on the lockdowns and the closures of places of worship. Uh, which has been intermittent and more severe in some places than others, like New Zealand, very, very strict, a uh, lot of issues with gathering together and also people who have not taken a snake bite jab, they will, will be, um, they've not been able to go to church at all or to attend a temple. Uh, that has changed recently, but I believe with the monkeypox outbreak, it's going to go back to the way it was where people won't be able to to, to move anywhere so i call this the scattering that daniel spoke of in chapter 12 where the holy people will be scattered for three and a half years but i'll just um, read what it says in daniel here it says in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the ablation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make it desolate set up there shall be 1290 days so um as you can see i've got to put a picture of the united nations army uh, invading the uh, the jerusalem uh, the new jerusalem and the old jerusalem i believe this will be a time when um the united nations have to mobilize to america and then russia will start to mobilize to uh, the old jerusalem with turkey and iran Maybe after the demise of America, Russia might take over uh, with China as being a new power and they might control the United Nations. Um, I believe that what's happening with Russia and Ukraine is all a big setup and they're actually all in it together to, to like take over the West, uh, Russia and China. <clears throat> so I believe that um, the Rockefellers set up the United Nations uh, and, and and these these entities are just working towards basically creating a communist world, which is very much like the way China and Russia have always operated, really. Um, so the daily sacrifice um, being taken away could refer to many different things. There's many different layers to this revelation. It could remit, it could be referring to going to church or going to the temple or um, like destroying the holy temple which is your body uh, as well um, and the abomination that make it desolate being set up seems to be like this set up this kind of infrastructure to take down the west to take down christendom to take down the church and all things that uh, relate to christ so i've still got many slides to go before i end this presentation and um, but in the meantime i've just want to uh, let you all know that I've created some playlists, just try to tidy my channel up a little bit, and that's still uh, a work in progress. So uh, just uh, try to um, have a look at these playlists, and um, if you can, please share the videos. Um, I'd, be, I'd be very grateful for that. 
So I tried to make a alternative timeline uh, based on what a lot of people are saying out there in the Watchmen community. A lot of people believe that the first earthquake will take place in 2022. So the top timeline is basically what would happen if we had the earthquake this year. And that would obviously <clears throat> speed things up in terms of uh, worldwide destruction. <clears throat> but uh, the timeline at the bottom is the one that I created on a previous slide. Um, which basically says that will start in 2023. So um, the eclipse takes place in 2024 as well. So um, we know that people start to gather um, once they've been scattered. Um, because in Daniel 12, it says that you won't allow his people to be scattered any longer and time will be no more. So we don't need to like live our lives in the old kind of sense where we had to go to work and um, do things by certain time frame because when we have when we enter into the millennium or at least in the building of the new jerusalem we'll be welcomed to enter into portals which will be kind of um, opened up by translated beings for us to pass through uh, to gather people in um, so time won't really be an issue for us so that's why in Daniel 12, it says that there'll be time no more after this scattering period. But if you are left out in the cold in the world and you're not being gathered, then you're going to suffer for a lot longer. Um, people probably won't even know what time of day it is either because all things are going to be in commotion. Uh, people won't have access to electricity, so they probably won't have batteries and clocks and things. So you could say that's still partly fulfilled anyway. So here's a bit of a summary from your studies of Visions of Glory and studies of uh, this uh, monkey box um, time frame that we've got from the Nuclear Threat Initiative. Uh, this is why earthquakes won't happen uh, in 2022 in America. Um, and the reason for that being is that we have a lot of events that need to take place first. So let's look at these bullet points. So smallpox is slow moving compared to C19, but more deadly. It has a death rate of 1% um, and also a death rate of 10%, depending on which strain you get. But because we know these are weaponized and um, have been stored um, secretly uh, for a long time, the ones that get released are probably going to be much more deadlier. Um, I think in Visions of Glory, he said that 60% of people that got uh, the smallpox or the monkeypox uh, virus died. If it's produced by the body uh, from taking the snake bite, uh, bite jab, uh, then that might take time to develop within the body. So if you've had the snake bite jab, uh, this could be something that come as your body tries to um, cleanse itself of uh, what's happened to it through the snake bite job then we may you might end up with pustules that could be even more contagious that would have developed into a new type of virus because <clears throat> the body will become like a, a virus making machine um i think that's the idea with these weaponized um snake bite jobs also banks have to close overnight and bartering of goods has to take place as per visions of glory Nuclear attacks in the US have to happen first, according to Visions of Glory. And intermittent, intermittent uh, energy blackouts were already happening. We know that we've heard some warnings in the news about uh, blackouts, but this could be a 12 month period of all these events to, to take place. <clears throat> More lockdowns to break the supply chain down, and then we have the perfect abomination of desolation ready set up for 2023. So I just cannot keep away from studying the Old Testament and um, I found in Zechariah uh, 13, um, it said that it more or less summarized what would happen to people in the end times that um, two thirds of uh, the church, whether that be our church or whether it be uh, Christendom as a whole, I don't know, but it says this, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, save the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered 
and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They, sh they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. So I believe this is the remnant that will uh, survive, those that are destined to have this knowledge of these events. So just going back to Isaiah chapter 1, um, it says, Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers as a besieged city. So um, what this means is, is that um, Zion will just have a little pocket. It'll be like little pockets of places of safety, but you couldn't really count a whole city as a place of safety or a whole town or a whole county or a district as being a place of safety. It'll literally be where the Lord's people are. That's where the safety will be. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So here's another great scripture in Hosea um, chapter 5. It says, For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, and as a young lion to the house of Judah. Now the difference between a lion and a young lion is, is that one, you cannot kind of be around because you'll tear into pieces but then little little uh, cubs obviously they they can be uh, actually uh, used as pets um, as you can see in this top picture with the children uh, giving it a bottle of milk so let's just break this down ephraim um as a lion so the lord's going to destroy ephraim um in a real bad way and but he's going to be more gracious to the house of judah so we're probably going to see more destruction in the americas than we're going to see in israel so you know a lot of people say now oh, i don't really want to be in in jerusalem when all this kicks off but actually it might be probably one of the safest places in earth on earth so um, new jerusalem obviously will also be a safe place i don't know what's going to happen in the united kingdom because um, we as a church here don't have any food storage or no bishops houses we have some land down south in Suffolk that the church had bought up and I would encourage members um, to consider um, obviously using that land as a place of refuge when times get hard but that will probably be done in the direction of priesthood holders anyway at the time um, but we don't have any spare food here so I don't know how we're going to survive but hopefully the Lord will provide for us yeah, we are a little island and we do have lots of uh, running streams yeah, to drink water from. I don't know how clean they're going to be. I don't know if Russia's going to send a nuclear um, bomb off here, but Britain and Russia are really head to head at the moment regarding these matters, uh, regarding the Ukraine. And in verse 15, it says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offence and seek my face. And in their affliction, they will seek me early. So that offence being that we have we have and probably will end up leaning upon the United Nations and the World Health Organization uh, as our gods um, for, the, for the foreseeable future. Uh, as the armies come in and invade, we will probably... Um, put too much trust in them and then end up being <coughs> like falling away from the Holy Spirit's guidance and um, that'll be unfortunate for us but in the end we get what we deserve for trusting in Babylon and not recognizing this organization as a satanical communist uh, anti-Christian organization so we'll pay a price for trusting in them pay a price for taking their advice basically so some of the side effects of the snake bite jab let's see so look at uh, justin bieber and his wife um these two um well justin bieber uh, was once a god-fearing um person particularly in his teenage years i don't know 
what he uh, what his current position is at the moment, but he really ever sings any God uh, songs about God like he used to when he was younger. <clears throat> but he, um, I don't know if he has taken a jab or not, but uh, it, it looks like they both have because um, his wife um, had a mini uh, stroke known as a transient ischemic attack, uh, or should I say a TIA. Um, that was uh, this year. In March, I believe. And now uh, Justin Bieber has a very unusual um, condition, um, similar to Bell's palsy. And um, these uh, are likely to be from taking a snake bite jab. I've seen many patients with myocarditis, even at the age of 23, get so many people collapsing that are young now. Um, some people, some people coming in with chest pain, um, some people coming in with strokes, and uh, the list goes on, but very rarely the doctors ever asked them when was the last time that you took your booster shot. That question never gets brought up. So what does Visions of Glory have to say about the mark of the beast? Spencer did not see a physical mark. People chose to trust in the troops for sustenance rather than gather to Zion, had spiritually marked themselves as opposed to receiving a chip. And they were the words of Spencer himself, and I'll just read out what he, he said in his book. It was a mark we placed upon our own souls. It was not visible to another human, but those who had marked themselves in this way could not discern the Holy Spirit. They found themselves completely reliant upon the foreign soldiers who truthfully had no long term interest in their survival. So it goes to show that people are going to not going to be able to listen to the prophets and apostles on a frequent basis if they're having to listen to troops and the Holy Ghost as the reliable source of uh, guidance. When the tribulations began, it was nearly impossible for those who had received the mark of the beast to see God's hand reaching out to lead them to safety. And that's what is experienced in the last couple of years. Uh, people are completely blinded by uh, what's gone on. So, um, recently there has been another World War Three alert in the news um, talking about how China will attempt to use military force to take control of Taiwan and they will take advantage of the European Union's weakness against dealing with Russia at this time. But I believe they're all in it together. Uh, they want to hand over all the powers to China and Russia to allow them to basically invade um, Israel, That's Satan's agenda. So in the appendix of Visions of Glory, there is the Cosden Prophecy, uh, written in 1923. So on the next slide, I'm going to read a little bit from that. Also, please like and subscribe to the channel and please share this video to help support the growth of the channel. Thank you. So this goes to show uh, how uh, China is probably going to be a key a player in this uh, World War Three scenario, which was seen at the moment. In the Causton letter, it states, I saw international war again break out with its center upon the Pacific Ocean, but sweeping and encircling the whole globe. I saw that the opposing forces were roughly divided by so-called Christianity on the one side and by so-called followers of Muhammad and Buddha on the other, and Buddha being obviously the Chinese. I saw that the great driving power within these so-called Christian nations was the great apostasy of Rome in all its political, social and religious aspects. I saw the worldwide dislocation and devastation of production, which we've seen so far with uh, the lockdowns and the uh, supply chain breakdown and slaughter of people that came more swiftly and upon a larger scale than ever before. I saw antagonism begin to express itself from the so-called Christian nations against your people, which would be the EU and America, turning in on itself on its own people. I saw those with a similar faith to yours in the Far East begin to look toward Palestine for safety. I saw the international world war automatically break down and national revolution occur in every country and complete the work of chaos and desolation. I saw geological disturbances occur, which helped in this work as if it were intended to do so. 
I saw the cause and sample preserved from all of the, this geological upheaval, which in the book Visions of Glory, he had a vision of the cause and sample being a place of refuge. I saw the international boundary line disappear, which is the agenda of the United Nations, as these two governments broke up and dissolved into chaos. I saw race rioting upon the American continent on a vast scale. I saw hunger and starvation in this world. I saw disease produced by hunger, strife and chaos. To complete the end of this present order or epoch. How long these events were in reaching this con consummation, I do not know. But my impression was from the outbreak of the international war, these things developed in a continuous procession and almost ran concurrently, as it is with a sickness. The various symptoms are all in evidence at once uh, and the same time, but in different stages of development. My intensified thought was what of the church, if such is to become of the kingdoms of the earth? My question was immediately answered by a subconscious statement, as it is in the church today. And I saw these higher spiritual beings throughout the length and breadth of the air, marshalling their spiritual forces, which is probably the 144,000 translated beings, and concentrating them upon the high officials of your church upon the earth. I saw further on instructions given whereby places of refuge were prepared quietly but efficiently by inspired elders. I saw cars in the surrounding foothills, especially north and west for miles, being prepared as a refuge for your people, quietly but quickly. I saw elders still under the vine guidance, counselling and encouraging the planting of every available acre of soil in this district, so that large supplies would be uh, near the refuge. I saw the church pro property under cultivation as an intensified character, but not for sale or profit, but for the use of the people. I saw artisan wells and other wells dug over that territory so that when the open waters were polluted and poisoned, that the people of the church and their cattle should be provided for. So once again, in the UK, we have land that's owned by the church, hundreds of acres down in Suffolk, uh, near the London Temple. So the next upcoming presentation is going to be Mark of the Beast, part three. I'm going to go more into the snake bite, grievous sores, etc. In Revelation 16, it states that the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. So I'm not too sure whether um, the people that took the snake bite job are the producers of this um, monkey virus. To be honest, um, in the next presentation, I'm going to go into a little bit about the origins of monkeypox and how it was through the polio vaccine that was given to the monkeys in the research labs uh, in the 1970s. They ended up breaking out in these pox. So once again, do uh, snake bite jabs um, actually create new viruses? Possibly. Um, have these um virus has been studied and weaponized absolutely and the question is you know are they really looking for a cure or are they, are they just looking at the problems that occur from their experiments and then isolating those problems as and weaponizing them and that's most likely to be true so if you've made it this far thanks for watching the entire presentation please subscribe uh, to be ready for uh, the next uh, visions of glory timeline part two and the upcoming Mark of the Beast presentation. Uh, to do that, you might have to just press the um, alert button as well. So take care. Bye now.